Do you know what thiols are? Well, if you don't, you've come to the right place. I'm Suzy Sam, I'm a professional brewer, and I got to make a thialized West Coast Pilsner. Now I made this with my good friend Chris, who's the head brewer at a local brewery near me called Laverne Brewing. So in this video, I'll be showing you guys how I made this beer, what thiols are, and I'll even be giving you guys the recipe in the description. Also stick around to the end because I've got that beer packaged and ready to drink, and I'm gonna be breaking down its flavors. So let's get to brewing. So I arrived at Laverne Brewing early in the morning to brew our thialized West Coast Pilsner. Thankfully, Chris was nice enough to mill in for us the day before. We immediately started mashing in at about 148 degrees, which gives us high fermentable sugars and dries out our beer. The grain bill consisted 100% of Pilsner malt to mimic the light color and body of a traditional Pilsner, even though this was gonna be a West Coast Pilsner. Lastly, we added in some Cascade hops to the mash to activate thial precursors during the mash rest. So I wanted to briefly explain how important this mash hop is. We added about one pound per barrel of hops, which will contribute about a third of the IBUs that a normal 60 minute edition would. This addition is gonna be our primary source of thiol precursors, which will then be activated later on by the yeast and allow those thiol flavors to flourish in our beer. Don't worry, I'll be explaining thiols a bit more later on in this video. Now we let our mash rest and then send it over to the kettle to be boiled. Greening out. <laughs> Worst part of reverse thing. <laughs> so now we're completely grained out. This is spent grain. That's what's left over. Doesn't really want to focus on my hand, does it? That's all that's left. Well, while we were cleaning up the spent grain, our beard finally started to boil. So we set our timer for 90 minutes, added in our Magnum hops for bittering, and decided it was time for a beer. Chris was nice enough to pour us a couple pints straight off the bright tank. And let me tell you, it is a quite a different experience drinking beer right from the tank at a cold 28 degrees. And since we had some time to kill, we decided to sit down and talk about the beer and thiols in general. Well, friends, this is my good friend, Chris. Uh, we used to work together and now he's the head brewer here over at Laverne. And today we're making a beer together. So what are we making? Yeah, we're making a West Coast Pilsner and we're using Lunar Crush from Omega, which is a the all boosted lager strain. So we did a mash hop with a cascade to activate the precursors for thiols. What are thiols at this point? They, they come from wine, right? For the most part? I think so. Well, they're prevalent in wine? Yeah. And I think they, they've been around. This is just recently, they've done more studies at it at like Berkeley and other uh, laboratories. And I think it's a lot of like the tropical fruit Kind of aromas come from it and then i think also like some like sulfur and kind of stuff mm. like that so i think that's where it kind of comes from i don't know yeah scientifically exactly what they are i don't think a lot of people know right now either yeah. because it's so new and like yeah. even these yeast strains have just started coming out like this lunar crush didn't release the last like two months right yeah. something like that it's when it first came out for this it's like a lager strain with uh enzymes to activate the thiols uh and it's so it's such a new thing to beer and people are still figuring out what it specifically does, what kind of flavors yeah. it comes from. It Even like the best ingredients to use, um, I guess mash hopping also helps a lot with those pre Yeah, those and pre we specifically use Cascade because it's really good for those styles, and it's also really good for West Coast, so it gives us a little bit of both. It adds a bit of bitterness, a little bit of that aroma that comes from you know, West Coast IPAs yeah. on top of adding those styles. And so for like a West Coast Pilsner, on the hot side we're using more like German and lower alpha acid hops to kind of create a nice base level hop and then we're going to dry hop it with more modern American style hops. So we're going to dry hop it with more Cascade and uh, Citra. So a little old school, a little new school. A lot of other Thiel beers coming out currently. Uh, shit ton of hazies. Yeah. Like, yeah, that was the first one they did was Cosmic Punch. Right. Mm -hmm. So yeah, the hazy thing has been really... Is that what started the trend or was it the Phantasm powder? I think Phantasm, but then I think even before Omega, I feel like like Berkeley Yeast Lab or whatever it's called had a Thiel boosted. For reference, Phantasm Powder uh, is essentially dried grape skins uh, that have been crushed up and have been very popular in, uh, especially with the hazies that are trying to use these uh, these thiols, uh, because it's essentially just concentrated thiol precursor that is then unlocked by the, the yeast that is used. Uh, and a lot of people are adding in different parts, uh, mash, kettle, boil, knockout into the tank as a dry hop. 
so I feel like that was definitely one of the things that I started hearing about the most when this like file craze started and people really started getting into it. Uh, and on top of that, now that we've got more variety, because they did Cosmic Punch for Hazies, they did a West Coast version that's kind of like cleaner. Yeah. They did another Hazy version, which is supposed to be like 10 times the strength of Cosmic yeah. Punch. It's ridiculous. So all this hype came out for these uh, like thiol boosted hazies, and now they have one that's 10 times that. This is my first time using any sort of thiol boosted yeast, so I'm, I'm really excited to see how it turns. Thanks again for having me, and of course, let's keep on brewing. With our boil finally finished, we cut the burner and started our whirlpool, adding in our Callista hops as well, which you can kind of see floating on top there. Then we started our knockout, cooling it down to 54 degrees for fermentation and set up to pitch yeast. So this is the all important Lunar Crush yeast, genetically modified to process those thiol precursors. Now I mentioned how important the mash hop was, this is actually the most important part of the beer. We wouldn't be able to turn those precursors into tasteable thiols without this yeast. And once it was pitched, we were done. All right, we did it. We did it, boys. Beer's done, yeah. brewery's all cleaned up. Ready for tomorrow's day of brewing, which I won't be here for, sad times. Yeah. Red ale, but, baby. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And here we have it, the finished beer, ready to drink. Nice and clear, good frothy head and delicious too. The thiols are the forefront of this beer, which makes me really happy. That is exactly what we were aiming for. Something to showcase the thiols while still being a West Coast Pilsner that you can keep on drinking. So we talked about thiols and where they come from, but we didn't really talk about how they taste. So for me, this is a very passion fruit forward flavor. But in this beer, it tends to finish as a nice citrus note, uh, which tends to come from the citra hops. With this beer only being 45 IBUs and 4.8%, this thing is so freaking drinkable. I would be able to drink it all day. So thank you all for tuning in. If you guys have any questions about the recipe, thiols, or just anything beer related, please feel free to comment below. Also, if you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe. Once again, I'm Sudsy Sam. Don't forget to keep it Sudsy, and I'll see you next time.